know that the most important thing we can do for Vermont is make sure that every kid in Vermont gets a strong start. And with all the resources that we're spending on education, you know, our big challenge is that we have an opportunity gap in this state. And if you were born with means, if you were born lucky enough to be born with opportunity, uh, you have a lot of opportunity. And if you weren't, it's a lot tougher. And there's a real gap. And the difference between the Vermont that you all are growing up in and the Vermont that I was born and raised in is that when I was in school, believe it or not, and I know I'm old, but I'm not that old, a lot of my friends did pretty well with just a high school degree. They went through high school, they did well in high school, they stopped school, and that was the end of it. They went out and got a pretty good job. In this new workforce of ours, if you only get as far as high school, chances are you're going to sentence yourself to a low-wage job. So really, what all the data suggests, what we all know, is that if we do before school programs, if we do after school programs, if we do summer learning, we all win. Our kids get a strong start and we close the opportunity gap. So that's why the work that you all are doing as educators, as parents, as ambassadors and students is so critically important. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now listen, I get this one not just from the statistics, they matter, but from my own experience. Uh, I literally remember being called into the principal's office in second grade. Uh, and I don't know any of you who learned differently probably spent some time at the principal's office, but I certainly spent plenty of it there. And I remember getting called in and I go through the door, and you remember second grade. You know, we don't have any second graders here, it doesn't look like, but it wasn't that long ago. You remember it better than I do, but I go into the principal's office and my mom and dad are sitting there, oh, wow, this doesn't look too good. You know? So I couldn't think of anything that I had done wrong, you know, that day, anyway. <laughs> so I'm trying to go, you know, like, what's this about? Now, you got to remember, when I went to school in Vermont, and again, I know I'm old, but not that old, uh, there was no special education, there was no IEP, there was no early school program, there was no after school program, there was no summer program. It was basically a student, uh, one classroom, one teacher, and you were all in the classroom together, and you sank or swam to regardless of how you learn, what you learn is that way. Anyway, the principal turned to my parents with me sitting there, because I don't know if they thought it was important I hear this, I guess, and they said, you know, we don't know what's wrong with Peter. Uh, we can't teach him how to read. There's something wrong with him, but we don't know what it is. And, uh, you know, he's not likely to go, uh, ever be a good student. He's certainly not going to go to college. Uh, but, you know, we'll do the best that we can. And then they sent me back to the classroom. You know, it was a great day. <laughs> and uh, the thing about that experience that you all know is I, they weren't actually telling my parents anything I didn't know. I just thought I'd done a pretty good job of hiding it from my classmates, from my parents. I thought I'd hidden it from my teacher. You know, so the shock for me wasn't so much that mom and dad were hearing it. It was that everybody else knew. So without special education, I had a after school program. And it happened kind of simul kind of organically. This is before there were after school programs. I had a teacher who literally came up to me one day and said, you know, if you'll come home with me after school, put the time in, I'll teach you how to read. Will you do that? I said, yeah. I looked. This was a teacher who became a teacher of the year for Vermont years later who saw something in me that no one else saw. And she literally would load me into her Willie's Jeep at the end of school. And we'd drive up Windmill Hill Road, Westminster West. And the days like this, we'd sit around a wood stove. And in the summertime, we'd sit on a lawn. And it took her a year. But she'd tell me how to read, you know. And i got to tell you, it's tough to be governor if you can't read. <laughs> or it sure helps to be able to read if you're governor. <laughs> so, you know, my point is this the students, the ambassadors that are here, regardless of what the struggle is, regardless of what the fight has been, believe in yourself, work hard, do everything you can to get education beyond high school. It doesn't mean you have to go to college, although that'd be great. It doesn't mean you need to get a PhD, although that'd be even better. But get some training beyond high school at the very least. 
but most importantly, believe that with the people in this room, that we can all together get you what you need to make school exciting, to make learning exciting, despite how you learn. And I'll just close by saying this. I thank God every day, or whoever has got us here, uh, for the simple fact that uh, I had to struggle. I had to fight. Because I can tell you, as a governor, I had to learn very early on, starting with that second grade experience right before it, how to think about how I was going to get to the end of the tunnel, while the lazy learners, as I call them, could just ride through the tunnel without ever thinking about where they were going to be at the end. So, it can be a huge help to you in, problem, in solving problems of being creative and using everything you've got to get where you need to go. So thank you to the educators that are here, to the parents that are here, to the administrators that are here. This really matters. If you want to make sure that every student has the kind of opportunity that I had, I have to stumble on that teacher that day. But that was my luck. We should have a system to make sure that nobody gets left behind, including your next governor. So thank you so much.